and we can have a look at this task 19 um, which is said to be about maximum power transfer theorem we will think about this uh, later on i think the um, the, the task is also solvable without this or maybe maybe not but it's it looks complicated at the end it's maybe not that complicated we have a battery um, and this is regarded as a voltage source and as discussed before the voltage source each practical voltage source that you have has some kind of internal series resistance and now we have some values given if the battery is discharged at a certain load we get certain terminal voltages and when the battery is charged we have a different terminal voltage and a different current and now the question is what is the maximum power that this battery could deliver okay so any ideas what to do or maybe what not to do or how would you try to solve this That's one idea. Draw, draw a circuit. What, what always helps is to draw a circuit. This is, this is an excellent idea. So <laughs> we have the voltage source. And we have the internal resistance. Um, so I will, I will draw a resistance like this. So this is our internal resistance. And this would be the terminus of the battery and yeah so let's call this inner resistance or internal resistance and this would be our source voltage vs and so now we have these two cases um the case when the battery is discharged and when we discharge the battery, we connect a load resistance of 0 0.5 ohm. So let's call this our load and it's 0 0.5 ohm. And in this case, we get a terminal voltage of 3 volt and a current which also fits to this resistance then of course of 6 ampere okay so these are the the values here let's say from this sentence um, from from all this current of 6 ampere okay and now we have a second case namely when we charge the battery this would be the this is what I try to mark here in red and yeah, so how could I charge the battery? Have a second uh, source. A second source. So instead of this, I would connect a second source. And the second source mm, yeah, could be a current source, could be a voltage source. It must be any kind of source. And um, if we say it's a voltage source or yeah, it, it does not really matter but at the end we should get here and, and at these terminals we get 9 volt of voltage and we get a current in the very same direction um, of minus 3 ampere so what does this current of minus 3 ampere mean? It's a positive current in the opposite direction, right? It's, it's positive current going this way and recharging this battery. Okay, um, so I could also write it like 3 ampere going in this direction. Okay, so now we have a nice circuit. Um, and we have some values. And what we, yeah, and, and still we want to calculate what is the maximum power that this battery can deliver. So how to, how to continue? When, in, in which case would we get the maximum power out of this battery? Charging. 
when we charge the battery, we, will, we put power into the battery. Um, power delivery means power is getting out of the battery. Yeah, when it's fully charged, but when it's f mm, so <laughs> um, yeah, but in our model we have a constant voltage source, and uh, so we idealize it in a way that this source voltage does not really change if we charge the battery. So in in practice it would change, um, but here we assume that our source is just delivering or that the internal voltage source is constant. It does not depend on state of charge. Mm. Okay, so then we try to do something um, and try to find out about this maximum power transfer theorem. So um, let me just once again draw this circuit and say we have this voltage source, we have this inner resistance, and then we have the terminus, and at this terminus we connect another load resistance. And to not to confuse them with these values, I mean it's at the end it's, uh, it's the same circuit, but let's look at this independent of what we have drawn above. So we have an inner resistance and we have a, so uh, a load resistance and we have the source voltage. And now we are interested in what is the power in our load. So how can we get, how can we calculate the power in the load? Because it was uh, the source squared divided by the RI. Yeah, okay, so um, V source squared divided by R i like yeah so and p zero is the okay this is the t the the yeah okay where, where, where does this formula come from okay from the, from the slides okay let's keep this in mind so uh, we could say the 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 um, at first the power here is of course the voltage drop that we have across the load multiplied with the current that we have in the circuit. Okay, so how can we get the voltage across the load? No, nah, it's not really, it, it's, it's not given. We have, let's say we have the source voltage and we have this inner resistance. Uh, here, here, here in this case, of course, here on top it's given. Um, but that, that's why I've drawn a new schematic. So, so here, let's say, if we would know the source voltage and if we would know the inner resistance, how can we calculate the voltage drop across the load? Yeah, so we could say this is the, the difference between this, the source voltage and the voltage drop that we have across this inner resistor. Um, yeah, we, we, could, we could probably also use a voltage divider. So voltage divider for this load voltage would tell us Exactly, so RL, the load resistance divided by the total resistance, which is the inner resistance plus the load resistance multiplied with the source voltage. This gives us the voltage across the load. Okay, and how do we get the current? Once again, source voltage divided by total resistance, which is the same as we had there. Okay, and so then we get something as source voltage squared um, divided by this total resistance squared and then multiplied with this load resistance. So we get um, voltage squared multiplied with RL divided by RI plus RL and this also 
squared. Okay, and this would be, this is the power that we dissipate in this load. And so now the question is, yeah, when does this, when does this power get maximum? Yeah, and one, one idea would be if these two resistances are equal in size. Um, it's not, not directly obvious from this formula, but if we would say if this, if this load resistance is very small, um, if it's very small, then, so here it would get small. We have the source voltage only divided by the inner resistance, so we get high current but we get small voltage because if the load resistance is small, then our voltage would get small. So still remember uh, this here was our voltage and this here was the current. Okay, so for a small load resistance, we get a high current, but we get small voltage, so we get no power or small power. And the same is if we take a very high or high load resistance, then we get, okay, we get high voltage, but we get small current only. So also the power will not be super high. Um, but if these two resistors are equal, then we get half of the voltage, half of the source voltage we get into the load, and we also have kind of a high current. And um, yeah, so this maximum power means the load resistance should be equal to the inner resistance. And you could also show this in terms of a formula, and I think this is given somewhere in the book or in the script, um, is if you, yeah, if you um, try to reformulate or rearrange this formula that, it's, that there is the ratio between the two resistances in there, and then you calculate, try to find the maximum of this power with respect to the ratio of these two resistances. And the maximum is if the ratio between the resistances is one. So if they are equal. Um, yeah, I, I would not like to invest the time today to, to show this. It's, um, it's, it's shown in many books how to do this. Okay, but maximum power happens if these two resistors are equal. That's that's the important thing. So for, for our circuit here on top, now of course, what do we need to find? Yeah, we need to find the you know, resistance and we would need to find the source voltage um, to be able to calculate this maximum power. And the maximum power just happens if if we set the load resistance to the same value as the source resistance. Okay, so then how we can find the source voltage and the inner resistance in the circuit? <laughs> yeah, so what, what do you use or what do we set up for this equation? Yeah, so we, we could send, set up a Kirchhoff's voltage law for the circuit and write down all the values. So we could say the source voltage, um, if we go from this point to this point along this way, should be the same as if we go along this way. And so for the, um, for the green case, um, for the green case we have Ri multiplied with 6 ampere and then plus 3 volts. And for the red case, we have uh, Ri but minus 3 ampere multiplied with minus 3 ampere and then plus 9 volt. And so, yeah, now you can see we have here 
one equation with one unknown, namely Ri. And if we know Ri, we can insert Ri and then we can calculate the remaining source voltage. Okay, so um, what do we do to here with this equation to find Ri? Yeah, just get everything that belongs to Ri on one side, the other three on the other side. Um, so I will, I will um, just use blue now. So if we bring this to this to the other side, to this side, then we have Ri uh, six ampere multiplied with six ampere plus three ampere. On in this side, we have nine volt plus three volt, the three volt that we bring to this side. So here we have Ri multiplied with 9 ampere and here we have 12 volt. And so Ri will be 12 volt divided by 9 ampere. Um, have I calculated correctly? Maybe it's 6. Not 12. Uh, maybe it's 6 because, ah, because we need to have minus 3, of course. So let me, s let's see if I can delete this. So there should be a minus here, then it's 6 volt, then it's 6 volts, still 6 volt divided by 9 ampere, and then it's 2 third and volt divided by ampere is ohm. Okay, and so then we, we can we can do a cross check the the, the 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 mistake would have been obvious now um, so if we insert this now here we have minus 2 divided by 3 multiplied with 3 so it's minus 2 volt plus 9 volt is 7 volt so um, we should get that vs is 7 volt uh, right, if we take this and insert this now there. Um, and if we do the same calculation on this side, we should get the very same result. So 2 divided by 3 ohm multiplied with 6 ampere um, is 4, and 4 plus 4 volt plus 3 volt is also 7 volt. So this fits. Okay. So now we have the source voltage and we have the inner resistance. And um, yeah, so now we could say, okay, for, for maximum power, our load resistance should be equal to the inner resistance, should be also 2 divided by 3 ohm. And then we could calculate the power to the load using this equation here that we just set up. So it's the source voltage squared, it's 7 squared volt squared multiplied with... Um, yeah, and, and so here it's fairly simple. So we have load resistance. Here we have twice the load resistance. Um, yeah, may maybe we, we just insert the values. Okay, 2 over 3 ohm. And here we have 2 over 3, 2 over 3, this twice. Um, and then to the power of 2. So here it should be 4 over 3 squared ohm squared. So 1 ohm will cancel um, and yeah it's too early in the morning. Um, it's uh, so yeah it, it, um, okay I can cancel a 3 and a square for the 3 and then I still have uh, the 4 squared here and I can also could cancel something there, but, but I would say you could also just insert the values into a calculator um, because of the, this is 49 uh, multiplied with 2 is something like 98 um, divided by 16 and multiplied with 3. Okay, so 3 divided by 8, what? Okay. No, 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 no. Uh, just the, the, the times, the nine, sorry. 
would be uh, 18.375. Okay, 18.375 watt. Okay. Yeah, and this is then the power that is that could be delivered by our plane or by, by our battery here that we have in this case. Um, okay, I would try to do a short cross check um, for this calculation. So what did we say if we have this maximum power and if these two resistors are equal, then the voltage across the load should be if these two resistors are equal, the they should be the same and they should be half of the source voltage. So in this case here, our load voltage should be 3.5 volt because it's half of the source voltage for, for maximum power. Um, and yeah, the, the current in this case is also half of the short circuit current and the short circuit current is just the voltage, the source voltage divided by the inner resistance. This would be the short circuit current and then half of this. So 7 volt divided by the 4 over 3 ohm, ohm is volt divided by ampere. Um, so 7 multiplied with 3 is 21 and 21 divided by 4 is 5.2. Uh, um, yeah, I have 2 but um, okay, th th that's, why I, that's why I have 4. Yeah, so um, 7 multiplied with 3 is 21 and 21 divided by 4 is... if. 5.25 ampere and so now if we calculate 3.5 times 5.25 we should get the very same as here so I could also write this as the same as the 3.5 volt multiplied with the 5.25 um, ampere okay which questions do you have so far Yes. Uh, because we said the, the current in the very same direction as before, or the, the current flowing in, in the direction that we have a voltage drop like this is negative. And I've just put the minus to the front. Of course, the, the inner resistance is not negative, the current is negative, or the current is flowing in the opposite direction through this inner resistance. And that's why we have the minus. And uh, regarding if the uh, RL was set first by half, uh, by half ohm, did we change it or what, what happened? Why, why is it now two by three? Uh, because the, the, here the load resistance was uh, 0 0.5 ohm. And for the 0 0.5 ohm, we got this 3 volt and 6 ampere. And if you calculate here the power, um, let me use green once again. So here, what, what would be the power? It would be 18. So here the power is even slightly larger. I mean, here we, we already have been quite close to this maximum power point, um, but the resistance is slightly too small. Yeah, so we, we still have, uh, we, we get a bit more current in this case, as in our maximum power point, but we guess we get uh, le less voltage. And so the, the more current cannot compensate the less voltage and that at the end we get uh, here slightly less power. Yeah, and so this maximum power point happens if the load resistance is the same as the inner resistance. Okay. Yeah, and, and no, so the, the, here the inner resistance is the same. Uh, I mean, it's still fitting to these equations. If you insert the um, 2 over 3 ohm here, 
um, it nicely fits that we get to the seven volts. No, no problem. Yeah, so this, this, this works. Okay. More questions related to this task? Then I would like to show a different way how to solve this and how to think about ideas like this. And mm, this way is, is maybe a more mathematical way, but I would say it's still a simpler way. It's, it's kind of a graphical way to solve this. If you look at these equations here, um, from a mathematical point of view, what do you see? Um, or maybe what do you know? Yeah, it's a so we have um, we have something. Yeah, maybe we, we, we would need to rewrite this in a different way. Let's um, let's write it like this: that we have our load voltage. If I write down an equation for the load voltage, so. And I will use gray once again. So if we look at the load voltage and just write down this Kirchhoff's law in a different way, then the load voltage is the source voltage minus our inner resistance multiplied with the current that we have. And I could rearrange this in a way and say, uh, just if I change the order, it's minus the inner resistance multiplied with the current plus the source voltage. And so if we say for our for a circuit that we have, this is fixed and this is fixed and this is a variable and then this will be also a variable. Um, so how does it look like then? We, 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 we have a formula where we have two constants and we have some, let's say, variable input, the current in this case, and then we get a variable output, the voltage drop across the terminal. It's, it's a function, it's a linear function. So it's a linear function, it's the same as if you would say uh, y is m times x plus n. This is the N, this is the M, the current is the X, uh, our load voltage is the Y. Okay, and so this way, um, let me open up a new page and just paste this once again. And once again, make it a little smaller. So, yeah, we could also try to use this um, by looking at linear functions. And so here we can see, okay, the, um, our x variable corresponds to the current, our y variable of the linear function corresponds to a voltage. So if I, if I would draw a plot, then this would be the voltage axis and this would be the, no, we have no negative voltages, I would say. Um, I can also draw the current axis here. This would be the current axis. Voltage and current. Uh, voltage at the terminus and current in this, in this loop. Okay, and so now we need to check the values. So we have voltages from from yeah, 3 to 9 volt um, and so maybe starting from 0 we could say okay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So here would be the 3 and here would be 9 volt. And so for the current we go from minus 3 ampere to 6 ampere. So let's say here's minus one, minus two, minus three. This is the current in ampere. And here to this side, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six ampere. Okay, and so now we have, once again, the two cases. 
um, at the 0 0.5 ohm load, we have a terminal voltage of 3 volt at a current of 6 ampere. So here is the 3 volt at 6 ampere. Right at this position, this is our um, discharging. And the charging for the charging, I will once again use red. So this was the discharging. And the charging happens um, at 9 volt with a current of minus 3 ampere. So this is the case that we have here. So this is charging. Okay. Um, yeah, how to how to continue? How does this help me in solving this task? Yeah, and so the, the, the function that we have just written down before tells us it should be a linear function. And we have these two points, and the connection between these two points should be just a line, a straight line. So if we draw a straight line, and it's much simpler if you have a ruler to do this. So then um, the straight line should look like this. And this straight line is now connecting our two operating points that we have for charging and for discharging. And so how, yeah, what can I read from this line? Source the source voltage, because the source voltage is the voltage that we have if the current is zero. So this is our source voltage. And if you draw this correctly and so on and so on, um, yeah, you find out, okay, it's exactly at 7. So this here is our source voltage, Vs. Okay, so what else can we find out from this curve? Short the, the, the short circuit current, exactly. So this should be our um, yeah, short circuit current. Um, and and the resistance by the slope. So if we, for example, check here, so here we have three volts from here to here. And here we have, uh, no, three ampere, sorry. So we have three ampere. And for the 3 ampere, we have a voltage drop of 2 volts. So this gives us our inner resistance, like from the slope of this curve. 2 volt divided by 3 ampere is the 2 over 3 ohm. Um, yeah, and so here also we go down by 3. Um, so here this should be at 10.5. And if you draw this, you could also see this, that it's at 10.5 ampere. And so this also fits to what we had before, that the, um, the current that we had at this maximum power point was half of the short circuit current and half of 10.5 is 5.25. So this, this perfectly fits. Um, so let me go down once again. Okay, so we, we, we get open circuit voltage, we get short circuit current from the slope, we get this inner resistance. Um, okay, where do I find, if I, if I take another color, um, so where do I find this 0 0.5 ohm in this schematic? Or how would, um, a resistor look looked like in the circuit. Um, resistance means we have 
voltage divided by current. If we so here in this schematic we always have voltage as a function of current. So if I rearrange this, voltage is resistance times current. And back to our mathematical function, this would be simply as y is m times x. So how how does a resistor look like in the schematic? Just just a slope, just a function going up. And 0.5 means um, we go here one step to the side, one step up. Two steps to the side, one step up, two steps to the side, one step up, and so on. So our 0.5 ohm resistor looks like this. And of course also um, crosses the characteristic line of our source at this discharging point. And so our, um, if we would have a resistor, RL, that is the same as the inner resistance, um, which is 2 over 3 ohm, then we go 3 to the side, 2 up. We go another 3 to the side, 2 up, um, 3 to the side, 2 up, so at um, and so on. So at, at this point here, if we have the um, short circuit current, we, we would have the full voltage drop across this inner resistor. Um, yeah, so my schematic here is obviously not the best, but the curve. Uh, some, something is wrong here at the beginning, uh, but okay. So we would, we would end up at this point. And at this point, yeah, I think it's not too bad. So this is our, this is our maximum power point. And at this maximum power point, as discussed, we have half of this short circuit current and we have half of our source voltage. And yeah, we get, we get a lot of current, we get a lot of voltage um, and, and that's why we have the maximum power at, at this position. This is how it looks like in this, in this diagram. Um, then one remaining thing, because be before we do some small experiment that we can discuss, what is the efficiency at this point? Um, no. So, yeah, it's 50% because we have like half, half so our, our two resistors are equal. I, I need to go back to the circuit. Yeah, so the two resistors are equal. So we have half of the voltage coming from the source across the one resistor, half of the voltage across the other resistor. So we get maximum power into our load, but the same power is also lost in our source. Um, and that's why the efficiency is just 50%, yeah, which is which is not good. Um, and so that's why you, you only use this maximum power transfer if you don't care about efficiency. And so for all power applications, you usually care about efficiency. So for, for all power applications, you would, you would make sure that you are somewhere close in this region here. Yeah, so we have almost no voltage drop um, across the inner resistance of the source and therefore you get high efficiency. And so this maximum power point you only use if you don't care about efficiency um, or if you don't have to pay the input power. Um, so if your source would, would be some photovoltaic cell, some photovoltaic module, the, the characteristic curve would look a little different, um, but there you would try to find the maximum power point because you, you don't pay for the sun and you don't care about the efficiency of your photovoltaic module. You want to get the maximum power out of this module. 
Um, the same is, for example, if you, um, yeah, if you would look at, at the antenna in your cell phone, for example, or the, the antenna in a radio receiver, the antenna is also some kind of source that has a source voltage, uh, a voltage that you get by receiving the field and some inner resistance. Because it's an antenna, it's made of a wire, it has some radiation resistance and so on and so on. So still, the power that you, that you receive with an antenna is usually very small. And you don't care about the efficiency. You want to get the maximum power that you can get out, out of the antenna in your receiver to get a good signal-to-noise ratio. So also, for example, for an antenna, you want to get this maximum power point. You don't care about efficiency. Um, Yeah, so th there, are, there, are, um, yeah, there are circuits where you don't care about the efficiency, still want to have maximum power. But for everything where yeah, power is involved and where you need to pay for the power, um, you would always make sure that you are here on top of this curve somewhere where efficiency is very high. And for sometimes you also use circuits, you also have circuits where you have this... Um, where we're always close to the, to the maximum current. Um, efficiency is very bad, um, but then the current more or less stays constant. And this is, for example, if you, if you power a small LED from a battery, you have a nine volt battery, the LED just needs two volts, 2.5 volts, and then you have a large series resistor and most of the voltage drop will go to the series resistor. Um, so the efficiency of the power going to the, to the LED is very small, but okay, it's also just some microwatts, so you don't care about this, let's say, or some, some milliwatts maybe. 